Sir Topham Hatch Railway has a new look. From end to end, they're clearing old ballast from the tracks and packing sleepers with fresh stones. The gangers are pleased. Leaves don't grow in it. Even James has stopped grumbling about dirty sightings. Donald and Douglas, the Scottish engines, disappeared regularly behind the big station, along the line on which none of the others had ever gone. They returned with lowered ballast trains, and were most mysterious about it. All they talked about were small engines that brought the ballast down from the hills. Soon the engines could talk about nothing else. James and Henry thought the small engines must be some kind of magic. Huh. I don't believe it, said Gordon. Donald and Douglas had pulled our wheels before. But Duck, the great western engine, wanted to see it for himself. So he asked permission to take some cars. When he arrived, he was told to push them under the chute. This was like a tunnel made of steel girders. On top of it stood some queer looking cars. What do you think of our shoe? said a voice. Good, isn't it? Duck blinked. Standing beside him was a small green engine. Where did you spring from? asked Duck. I've been here all this time, smiled the small engine. I'm Rex. And you, I'm sure, are Duck. How did you know? That's easy. There's only one great rusting engine in these parts. There is a sudden rattling and whirring. Duck's whole train shuddered. W what was that? That was our chute. The bottom of these wagons slide out. And the stones fall through the chute into your cars. We may be small, but we're quite efficient. Duck puffed away, much impressed. Next time, there were three small engines. Rex introduced Duck to Bert and Mike. As you can see, the small controllers gave us different coats. Phew, <sighs> silly nonsense. I like being blue. It's all right for you, but not for me. Passengers all say I look like a pillar box. Shocking, said Rex and winked at Duck. Considering our feelings, when we're both green, passengers keep calling me Mike. You, you. All right, stop it, you two. Duck, he went on. Have you seen our coaches? Coaches? Where are they? Over there, said Bert. But their cart, I mean, they're not like ours. I agree, said Rex. They do look like cars, but they behave surprisingly well. <sighs> Says you, put Mike rudely. They're all right, said Bert. If you treat them right, besides the passengers like them, they won't use coverage on a fine day. It's the scenery, you know, trees, mountains, and such. I can't understand myself, but then even passengers are queer. 
You're right there, said Mike. Give me good train every time. Do you like cars? Duck was surprised. Not all of them, smiled Mike. But our big bounce hoppers are different. They run on bogeys as sleek as any coach. We take them to the old mine, fill them up, and run down here to the chute. No trouble at all. How about hot axle boxes, Puddin' Rex? We soon carry that nonsense. You mean the small controller did? Same thing, grinned Mike. Duck chuckled delightedly. Rex and Mike loved teasing each other. I can't understand it. Why haven't I ever heard of you before? The small engines answered at once. We only just come from our railway in England, which is closed. Sir Topham Hat asked us to come and fetch ballast for him, and he said he'll bring us plenty of passengers, too. Haven't you had passengers before? asked Duck. Only in England. It's our first season here. Oh, then I'll bring you lots, he promised. Goodbye. Then Duck puffed excitedly away to see about it.